Hello everyone, welcome to St. Peter and St. Paul United Church of Christ. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. We're glad that you have tuned in to worship with us and we are looking forward to our time together. We hope that our service is a blessing to you. I'm here in the chapel at St. Peter and St. Paul and Joel and Mary Beth and Aaron Westermeyer are here with me. They're uh, our video production team and we are thankful to them for all of the hard work that they put into these videos each week. And uh, we know that uh, uh, it is a labor of love and we know that you will be blessed by uh, worshiping with us. And so we thank you for, for joining us. We hope that uh, God blesses us today as we worship together. And this is the fifth Sunday in Lent and uh, we continue our Lenten journey, but we are looking ahead to Holy Week and Easter and we look ahead with hope. Uh, we also want to invite you to join us for uh, in-person worship at St. Peter and St. Paul. We meet every week at 10 a.m. and uh, we are located at 3001 Queen City Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45238. We would love to have you join us and uh, we look forward to meeting you in person. So now may God's Spirit be with us and bless us as we worship God together. Please join me for our responsive call to worship. Breath of life, you animate us. We come before you seeking revival from within. Holy One, when you speak, great things happen. Empower us to make great things happen. Matchless One, you bring good things to life. We desire to bring good things to life too. Our first hymn is hymn number 517, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. i 
Please join me for our invocation. Life giver, come and revive us again. Indwell us with your spirit and let our souls awake to joy. We come boldly so that you might breathe on us. May what we experience with you today change us forever and for the better. Amen. God's Spirit is among us and inviting us to a renewed and revived life. Let us begin the journey of renewal and revival by confessing our sins to God and receiving God's loving forgiveness. Please join me for our prayer of confession. Mender of hearts, we confess that sometimes in our brokenness we cause brokenness in others. Sometimes in our woundedness we wound others. In these despairing moments, we need healing and restoration. We give thanks that we are never beyond your reach or grace. Amen. God's mercy makes wholeness possible, and our wholeness is rooted in becoming who we are meant to be, living sanctuaries. Amen. And now we come to our time of pastoral prayer. We invite you to bring all of your joys and all of your concerns to uh, our time of prayer today. And if you would like to share a prayer request with us, we have a link right below the video. You can click on that link and uh, it will take you to a form that you can fill out. And we would be more than happy to share your prayer request or your joy with our congregation on Sunday mornings uh, and in our weekly email update that we send to our congregation. Uh, let us take all of our needs, our concerns, and our joys to God. Let us remember uh, uh, our leaders uh, in our nation and in our world. Let us pray for peace. Let us pray for all of those uh, who are struggling and those who, whose lives have been interrupted by natural or human-made disasters. Let us uh, pray for God's presence uh, with them at this time. Please bow with me as we go to God in prayer. We watch and we wait for you, O God, our Maker, and ask that you would bring us hope. We watch and wait for you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we ask that you would bring us love. And we watch and we wait for you, Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would breathe life into us. God of the valley of dry bones, we thank you that there is life after death, that with you there is always the hope of resurrection. God of the tomb and friend of Lazarus, we thank you that you call us out of dead spaces to live in fullness and to go with you to the heights and the depths. O God of hope, you are the only one with the power to resurrect that which is dead or dying. And we thank you that you do not leave us alone before tomb, but you stay with us, you weep and grieve and mourn with us. When healing means death, you wait. When death brings opportunity for new birth, you watch with us and you call us to respond and your everlasting love is our support. Gracious God, loving God, you are with us and you do not leave us. In our grieving and despairing, you are attentive to our cry. In our waiting and watching, you are with us. God, in your steadfast love, we anchor our hope. We pray for all who find themselves in the depths, whether it is despair or debt or too much work or too little time, whatever their circumstances and needs. God of hope, breathe your life in peace. God, for all who find themselves waiting, wondering about what is next, whether it is a choice about next steps, 
whether they're worrying about the next paycheck or meal, whatever their circumstances and need, O God of hope, breathe your life and peace. God, for all who find themselves watching, perhaps feeling bound, whether it is a fear of stepping out or of moving on, whatever their circumstances and need, O God of hope, breathe your life and your peace. O God, you care for all your children, and so we wait and we think of all of those who are journeying from death to life, from grieving to healing, from despair to hope. There are those that we recognize on the journey and so many that we do not know or cannot yet see. Whatever their circumstances and their need, God of hope, breathe your life and your peace. And now in these moments of silence, eternal God, receive the personal prayers that we offer to you, we pray. All of these prayers, spoken and unspoken, we offer to you, O God, and in the name of Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, beginning at verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. They were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord." So I prophesied as I had been command, commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and Breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. 
then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Our second scripture reading is our gospel reading from John's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, Jesus, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him 
and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, do you know what did the doctor say to the skeleton who had a temperature of 102 degrees? Looks like you are running a femur. <laughs> and why can't skeletons eat spicy food? They just don't have the stomach for it. Well, in this narrative, we find uh, uh, words about bones, about skeletons. And the narrative we find in Ezekiel, uh, it is an intriguing narrative. God places the prophet Ezekiel in the middle of a valley. The valley is full of skeletal remains, the dry bones, as Ezekiel describes them. The image is suggestive of a battle site. Ezekiel says that there were many bones. The valley was full of them, and they were very dry, suggesting that they had been dead for a long time. We've all seen them, haven't we? Pictures, images of a battlefield soon after a battle, covering the battlefield or the bodies of those who have fallen in battle. There are a number of Civil War era photos of lifeless bodies of men strewn about the site of the fighting, men who were someone's loved ones, tragic images of lives cut down too soon. They are haunting images. And I suspect that this was a haunting image for Ezekiel as he stood in the valley of dry bones, as he probably grieved over that site. Ezekiel was in exile, living with his fellow exiles, and he had seen the, the complete defeat of his nation by the Babylonian forces, and then the complete destruction of Jerusalem about a decade later by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. There was not much left of his nation, there was not much left of Jerusalem, and the people had reached a point in which they were not expecting anything to happen. They were lost in exile. They'd given up hope. But Ezekiel had this vision, and in this vision, God takes him to this valley where there has been so much destruction that has, been ta that has taken place, so much that he sees the nation as being like a lifeless valley of, of old, dried-up bones. It's like a graveyard. His nation was like a graveyard, is what he was seeing in his vision. Ezekiel has shown the valley full of bones, and he is told that the bones are very dry, a way of emphasizing that there is no life at all left in these bones. These bodies, these bones, they've been dead for quite a while. The Spirit of the Lord asks Ezekiel, mortal, can these bones live? And Ezekiel replies ambiguously. On the one hand, Ezekiel has to know that there really is no chance that these bones will live again. They've, they've been dead too long. They've been dried out. There, there's just no life left at all. But on the other hand, Ezekiel is wise enough and perceptive enough to know that God holds the power of life in God's hands. And if God breathes new life into these bones, then yes, these bones will live again. So when asked if these bones can live again, Ezekiel replies, O oh Lord God, you know. That's a pretty good answer. Perhaps that's the answer we should seek more often or say more often when we're speculating about this or that. God knows. In other words, Ezekiel believes that God is able to breathe life again into these dried up bones. And with God's help and with God's power, they can indeed live again. What in your life seems lifeless and dried out? Sometimes our, our lives and sometimes various aspects of our lives seem as if they are just sort of dried out and lifeless. They don't seem to, to have the life and the joy and the spirit that they once had. Has your joy dried up? Has your hope dried up? Has your enthusiasm for life dried up? Are you no longer looking forward to experiencing new things and discovering new things? Has your relationship with loved ones or friends dried up? Maybe life itself seems lifeless and dry to you. We all go through periods like that, don't we? 
That happens to all of us. The Reverend Dr. Janet Hunt was commenting on this passage from Ezekiel a few years ago, and she wrote this. She wrote, I heard on the news the other night that in a nearby city, black and white clergy were meeting again for the first time in 50 years. 50 years. I don't know the details, she says, of the disagreement during the civil rights movement, which caused them to sever community and connection. But surely after 50 years, those bones must have been pretty dry by now. I don't know what stirred them to change. I do know this. Not only there, but also here, it has taken profound devastation for us to notice enough to do something different now. And yes, one could say that like the people of Israel so long ago, we have had to come face to face with our failings, with our propensity to try to do it all on our own, with our too quick willingness to worship something other than God, before we have been willing or able to sense the breath of God blowing among us and through us. And so, yes, I have to believe that perhaps it is that very breath of God which also blew on those bones in Ezekiel's vision, which is now somehow finding a way to blow through the tension and fear and brokenness and, yes, death, which is bringing us all to our knees now. Something Something was happening in Dr. Hunt's community. Something was happening and taking place that meant that people were beginning to listen to the Spirit of God moving again. And even those dry bones, those dry bones would live again, would live once again. Mary and Martha were grieving their loved one, Lazarus. There was no life left. His body was dead. He had been in the tomb for four days. There was really, there was no hope anymore of Lazarus coming back to life. And yet Jesus came to him. He came to Lazarus' family and Jesus grieved uh, for his friend as well. When Jesus saw Mary, the sister of Lazarus, weeping, because of the death of Lazarus, and when he saw others weeping for Lazarus, John says that Jesus was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved, and Jesus began to weep. And along with his grief, Jesus demonstrated his faith. His faith that God could make even the lifeless live again. Jesus called Lazarus from the tomb, and Lazarus lived again, John tells us. Sisters and brothers, are you feeling lifeless today? Are you feeling lifeless today? Is your life feeling dried up? Is it feeling empty? Your life can be renewed. Your life, my life, can be revived. The Spirit of God can put life back into the driest, most lifeless of bones. He can put the Spirit of life back into your heart and back into my life and my heart, and we can live again. Um, Thomas Long shared this. Tells, he tells the story of a, a couple in Arkansas who had given their six-year-old son strict instructions to come home from playing every afternoon no later than 5 p.m. He's allowed to play with his friends, but his parents are quite serious about his curfew. If he's not home by 5 p.m., they begin to worry and they call around to the neighborhood to find out where he is. The boy knows this, though, and he is always careful to arrive home on time. Well, one April Monday, uh, the day after daylight savings time went into effect, the boy was late coming home, and when he finally arrived, a few minutes before 6 p.m., his mother scolded him for being late. You know you are to be home by 5, she said, and here it is, nearly 6. Puzzled, the little boy pointed out the window. But the light, he protested, the light. It's the light that tells me when to come home. Realizing what had happened, his mother smiled and gently explained that the day before, the time had changed, that everyone had reset their clocks, and now the daylight lasted longer. And the boy's eyes narrowed, and he asked his mother, Does God know about this? In a childlike way, this little boy was sharing, uh, Thomas Long says, what John offers us in his theological vision, Martha, uh, Jesus uh, wanted her to know that with God's daylight, uh, with God's daylight, uh, God's daylight would last longer than death and does last longer than death. 
And Ezekiel learned that with God, even the driest of bones, even the driest of bones can live again. Sisters and brothers in Christ, do you need to be renewed? Do you need to be revived? Do you need a, a, an infusion of God's Spirit in you? It can happen today. Even the driest bones can live again. Even the most lifeless body can be brought back to life through the power, the power of God. May God's Spirit be among you, be, among, be with me, be among all of us. And may God's Spirit renew us in a mighty way this day and every day. Amen. I invite you to join me in affirming our faith as we say these words of a song of faith that comes to us from the United Church of Canada. We sing of God the Spirit, who from the beginning has swept over the face of creation, animating all energy and matter, and moving in the human heart. We sing of God the Spirit, faithful and untamable, who is creatively and redemptively active in the world. The Spirit challenges us to celebrate the holy, not only in what is familiar, but also in that which seems foreign. We sing of the Spirit who speaks our prayers of deepest longing and enfolds our concerns and confessions, transforming us and the world. We offer worship as an outpouring of gratitude and awe and a practice of opening ourselves to God's still, small voice of comfort, to God's rushing whirlwind of challenge. Through word, music, art, and sacrament, in community and in solitude, God changes our lives, our relationships, and our world. Our next hymn is hymn number 638, In the Bulb There is a Flower. As we come to our time of offering, we extend to you our thanks for your ongoing support of the ministry and the mission of St. Peter and St. Paul United Church of Christ. God is the source of our supply. Let us give from what we have been supplied. May this supply meet every demand. Amen.
Please join me for our prayer of dedication. Divine Sustainer, receive this offering that we gladly give. May it be used to revive and restore those in need. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn number 556, Trust and Obey. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you have enjoyed the service. We hope that it has been a blessing to you, and we hope it's the beginning of a great week. May God bless you as you depart from our time together, and we look forward to worshiping with you again very soon. Sisters and brothers, as we go our separate ways, remember that God has placed God's Spirit within you. Go forth centered in God, and let God be centered in you. Go in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Master to be crucified with me.
our sweet.